The Pension Integrity Project revealed that states across the nation owed $1.2 trillion in pension. Um, is this the U.S.? Going into the COVID-19 economic crash. So um, bringing it back here, we've got the president of the Pension Industry Association of Jamaica, Sanya Goff, and she's going to discuss the ramifications. Good morning, Sanya. Hi, Dana. How are you? I am good, and I know you're great this morning. <laughs> All right, so you heard um, those figures that we threw out about the U.S. Um, a while ago, and we wanted to put ourselves in our own perspective. How has COVID-19, first of all, impacted the pension industry? So it's still early days mm -hmm. in terms of determining the overall impact on pension funds. Um, certainly the impact that COVID will have on the financial health of pension funds will be dependent on a number of factors. One, of course, obviously, is the depth and duration of any anticipated um, global recession. The funded status of each individual plan as well will have a significant um, um, impact. So if a, plan, a fund is um, solvent or if it's in deficit and the extent to which it's solvent um, or the extent to which it's in deficit would also, um, will also be, be significant as well as any asset um, diversification of the plan. So how the pension plan is invested, you know, to what extent is it invested in equities, mm -hmm. to what extent is it in real estate or bonds, etc. Yeah. So there are a number of factors that actually determine how any one plan um, is impacted. One of the things that will probably impact it is contributions. And people who are watching now are probably thinking to themselves, well, what are going to be my obligations during this time in terms of how I contribute to my pension plan? What, what are the obligations? Good question. So it really depends on how your salary is affected. So for those persons who have been laid off and laid off with no pay, there is nothing from which contributions can be made. Right. And so during this period of time, there would be no deduction to their um, to their pension account. And of course, that will obviously have an impact. Um, for those persons who have been laid off with pay, nothing will change. They'll continue to make contributions in the ordinary way. Um, employer obligations will be dependent on you know, the terms of the deed and rules and what their covenant obligations are. That being said, uh, the FSC recently issued a consultation paper where they are looking at uh, a raft of proposals, um, including the ability to potentially suspend contribution obligations um, on the part of both members and employers. Now, it's just a consultation paper. It's just in the, in the process now of getting feedback from the industry. And so it's, it's just still in the works. But if that does become law and it's fast-tracked, you could see some relief provisions for um, contributors to pension plans. Yeah. I, I'm thinking people are thinking, well, you know, in COVID-19, things are different. People are making concessions. It is one of the things you may be discussing um, the ability for people to access their pension. I know, I know normally you can't borrow or withdraw money, but, but it's one of the things on the table that people who may need to should be able to. So, Dana, that's really a controversial topic because people feel very strongly about it one, um, one way or another. Yeah. So right now you're correct. It's not possible. Certainly the law does not allow you to withdraw your pension contributions while you're an ongoing member. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few plans that may contemplate the employer being able to take cash from the plan, but that's rare. So the general position is that you can't withdraw contributions from your pension management. Um, but yes, part of the FSC proposal is the ability to take what's called hardship withdrawals. And if you can demonstrate that you are experiencing hardship um, during, um, experiencing hardship for a number of reasons, um, and you can satisfy those conditions, then you may be able to access uh, a percentage of your benefit. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some people who feel very strongly about that. Some people are of the view, and even within the industry, our pension industry, feel that you know COVID will pass, and already pension coverage is so thin. We're looking at only about ten percent of uh, of persons in private sector pension arrangements yeah. um, having coverage. And also, even for those who have coverage, the, the sustainability of the coverage in retirement is also very big. And so let's not touch your pension contributions and leave that alone. And then there's another camp, which is, and I think I joined that camp, which is this is a unprecedented situation. And we need to be able to accommodate uh, persons being able to live during this time. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the FSC proposal contemplates is persons who have taken withdrawals being able to 
um, put that money back at a time when they are better able to. And so there are there are a number of considerations that feed into the proposal. And if it does become long, um, right now they're engaging the industry with for feedback, but it could make a significant um, impact for persons uh, and improvement for persons during this time. Yeah, I mean, approximately 26% of the assets of pension plans in Jamaica are, are actually invested in equities. And um, we're seeing a little bit of what's happening with equities around the world. Um, so if I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to be retiring in the next year or two or three, should I be even a little bit concerned? So it depends. It depends largely on the extent to which your pension fund is exposed to equities. Okay. So you're correct. 26% um, in aggregate of pension fund assets are invested in equities. But any one plan may have a different level of exposure. And the impact that the, the, the um, depression in prices or equity prices will have on, on your plan also really, and, and the effect it will have on you, depends on how close you are to retirement. Mm -hmm. so, so for those plans that have a younger demographic, persons are far away from retirement, there's a greater chance that the economy will be bound with sufficient time for the, your, you know, your account and your benefit to, to, to um, be restored. Mm -hmm. For persons who are closer to retirement, if that plan is largely exposed to equities, and I'm thinking anywhere you know, in, in excess of 25%, you could find that your, the value of your benefit has significantly um, been impacted. And then also you have to look carefully at the type of plan you're talking about. Because if it is a defined benefit plan where the employer essentially makes the funded promise, it's the employer that's going to have to bear the brunt of that negative impact. Yeah. Um, final question before you go. I know a lot of businesses um, have not made it and some will not make it out of COVID-19. If I'm an employer and, and, my, and my, my workplace has closed down, how does that affect my pension? So for employers that have to complete the close down, the in impact will be a wind up of the pension plan. So for those employers who are closing down that have a pension plan, the impact will be a wind up. Mm -hmm. If the employer is contributing to an approved retirement scheme on behalf of employees, then you know the employer the employee will be able to continue to uh, participate in the retirement arrangement, though it may not benefit from employer contributions. So in a wind up scenario, you're looking at the the pension plan distributing the assets and paying you your um, entitled benefits. That process can take up to three years, anywhere between 18 months and three years. It's important though for members to appreciate that uh, the assets of the pension fund are insulated. And so the employer could not use any of those assets to settle its debts or pay creditors. It would only be used to set, settle and satisfy pension obligations and you know, paying any, any um, ex expenses on wind up. All right. Thank you so much, Sanya, for that. Um, if people want to get more information, who do they call? Where do they go? So they can check us out online in terms of the Pension Industry Association. I also encourage members who have um, queries in relation to their pension plan to directly make contact with the trustees of the pension plan. Mm -hmm. um, questions around the investment um, performance of the plan can be directed to the respective investment managers. And of course, the Financial Services Commission is the regulator for pensions in, in Jamaica. And if anyone has concerns about their pension benefits, they can also contact the regulator. All right, awesome. Thank you so much for speaking with us. President of the Pension Industry Association of Jamaica, Sanya Goff. Remembering Oliver Clark. That's what we'll do when we get back from the break. So please stay with us. <laughs> 